What's up, everybody? It's Pastor Brandon here with episode three of Cross Conversations. Uh, there is so much that transpired on that Tuesday of Holy Week. As a matter of fact, if you study the Synoptic Gospels, that's Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you'll discover uh, that Tuesday's events span across two to three chapters. So much to unpack and uncover that we don't have time uh, to. But there's one moment in particular uh, that I want to focus on during our time together right now. Uh, on that Tuesday morning, Jesus and his disciples make their way to Jerusalem to go to the temple. And on their journey, they pass by this fig tree, this withered, dried up fig tree. Matthew chapter 21 compresses this particular narrative, but it's in Mark chapter 11 where Mark makes it clear uh, that this is not their first encounter with this tree. On the day before, uh, they pass by this tree on their way to Jerusalem, but when they pass by it on the day before, the Bible describes this tree as being in full leaf. Jesus was hungry at the time and he sees this fully leafed tree and he goes to this tree with the expectation of being able to pull fruit from it only to discover to his disappointment that the tree was all leaves but absolutely no fruit. The tree looked promising but there was no sign of produce. Out of his frustration from what he had just experienced, Jesus cursed this tree and he says, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. Most commentators and theologians would suggest um, that this is a demonstrative precursor to what is about to happen next when Jesus arrives at the temple and he's so displeased by what he sees happening in the outer courts of the temple that he drives out the merchants and he even drives out some of the animals that were being sold for sacrifice as he exclaims, my house is to be a house of prayer, uh, but you have made it into a den of thieves. It is in this moment at the temple that Jesus confronts and addresses spiritual fruitlessness. And so at the tree, he dries up. At the temple, he drives out. And now perhaps some 24 hours later here, Jesus and his disciples are again passing by this same tree that has now withered up from the root. The disciples are amazed. They're astonished at the sight of this withered up tree. So much so that they ask, how did this happen so fast? This was just yesterday when you cursed the tree. How, how did it dry up so fast? And it is Jesus' response that, that arrested my attention. Jesus, in response to their astonishment and their question, he says that if you have faith and you don't doubt, not only can you do this, which has been done to the tree, but you can even speak to mountains and they'll be cast into the sea. And whatever you pray for, if you really believe, you will receive what you ask for. This scripture is a scripture that I've rehearsed many of times when I'm believing God for something big in my life and in those moments where my faith is being stretched, I lean on scriptures like this one. I recall to mind the words of Jesus when he says, all you have to do is have faith and mountains will be moved. I, I reflect on the words of Christ when he says, if you ask in prayer and you really believe what you're asking for, you will receive it. And so these words are not unfamiliar to me. However, what's interesting is the context in which these words are said in. Jesus speaks of faith on the heels of a moment of frustration that is caused by fruitlessness. In essence, Jesus says here that if you have faith, you can do three things. You can oppose that which is fruitless, you can overcome that which is formidable, and you can obtain that which is favorable. And here's what I've discovered, ladies and gentlemen, that for the most part, many of us have the faith that is needed to overcome that which is formidable, that's moving the mountain. And most of us have the faith that is necessary to obtain that which is favorable. That's receiving what you pray for. But where many of us struggle is having the faith and the courage to oppose that which is fruitless. Because the reality of the matter is that while we believe God to do the impossible and while we trust God to open doors and make ways and create opportunities and heal diseases, the reality is there are still some fruitless trees standing in our lives that we have yet to develop the faith and the courage and the audacity to address. I don't necessarily know what your fruitless tree might be. Your fruitless tree might be a fruitless relationship. Some of us are connected to people who have proven time and time again to be of no benefit to us, yet they still stand. For others, it may be fruitless routines. For some of us, we jump from job to job, career to career, situation to situation, with no sense of stability, no sense of direction, no end goal in sight. And though we are on the move and busy, we have yet to make progress. And then for others, it might be fruitless religion. 
with as much church as you attended, as much scriptures you can quote, and as involved as you are, you still struggle with being messy. Maybe you're still mean. Maybe your heart is full of malice. I don't know what that fruitless area is in your life. I don't know what fruitless trees may stand in your life. But here's what I know, that as much faith as it takes to overcome that which is difficult and as much faith as it takes to obtain that which we desire, it takes just as much faith, if not more, to address those fruitless areas in our lives. And so my challenge for you today is to stretch your faith. My challenge for you today is to go beyond believing God to alleviate your problems, go beyond believing God to just answer your prayer, but believe God enough to give you the audacity to address those fruitless areas in your life. God is not looking for anything fancy. He's just looking for fruit. And all he needs you to do is have the faith and the courage and the audacity to address those fruitless areas so that you can produce that which pleases him. God bless you.